up everyone it's your boy norn red 89 here bringing you another video today we're going to be talking about the new texas chainsaw massacre film it is currently on netflix that's where you can watch it this is the ninth film in the franchise today we're going to dive into it this is going to be a non-spoiler review even though like i said it's on netflix you can easily go access it right now but this is going to be a non-spoiler review don't want to spoil anything so don't worry about that and of course, in the comment section, let me know what you thought of the film, if you've seen it already. Now let's get into this. So Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2022 goes the requel route where it's ignoring the previous entries in the franchise. And this is a direct sequel to Toby Hooper's original first film. So we're going to ignore all those other ones. And this one takes place, I think it's around, it's around 50 years later. And it's about a group of teens coming to basically like gentrify like the town of Harlow and kind of revitalize the town and buy up the property and stuff. And they just, you know, start some drama and then stuff ensues and, you know, Leatherface comes back to haunt them and like terrorize them and all this kind of stuff. So let's get down and dirty into the stuff that I did love about this film. And what I'm going to tell you right now is easily bone the gore. If you're a gore hound or you love carnage candy, this is the movie for you for real. Even though there is a lot of CGI blood and a lot of CGI gore the way that it's lit the way that it's shot cinematography the colors and all that kind of stuff it really does do a good job and they add some realistic effects mixed in with it so that's a good job of like kind of hiding the CGI within your film so they do like I said a really good expert job at utilizing both practical effects and CGI effects also to add to that like I said in these comments the cinematography the shots look really good the lighting the way that Leatherface looks in a lot of the scenes there's these real deep blues and deep greens and just really cool lighting you know like that dusk light too with the you know deep oranges and yellows and stuff like that so like I said really cool stuff that I did enjoy in this film our leather face performance is also a kick-ass one for sure I think Mark Burnham if that's how you say his name he's the actor that plays him I think he does a really good job he does have kind of some homage ways about him kind of similar to Gunnar Hansen the way he acts and stuff like that he's a lot smarter in this film I can tell you that the way he is but you can probably attribute that to being like, you know, it is 50 years later, so he has had time, even though he has like kind of like that child mentality mind, he has learned some things over time, you know, that kind of thing. But he is definitely a smarter version of like Gunnar Hansen's like Leatherface from that first original film. Also, our characters in here are serviceable, but they're not bad. Like, they're not characters that you're going to hate or cringeworthy or nothing like that, I don't think. Like, in my opinion, they were decent characters. I was down to see them get killed and get see them get slaughtered by Leatherface because I definitely feel like he's more the protagonist in this film. Like, watching it, I just feel like it's much more the creators and writers went with trying to make us sympathize and empathize with Leatherface's character more than the actual, you know, kids of the town that are, or that are coming in to gentrify his town. So, but you know, it's, they're serviceable characters. Like I said, they're not annoying. And like I said, the dialogue isn't the greatest. It's not the best writing or anything like that, but it does what it does for this film. And it knows what kind of film it is. This is just a kick-ass fun ride. I really did enjoy this one. It has a quick pace. It goes by really fast. It's not going to demand you sitting on the couch long, but every moment of the film, I felt suspense, I felt thrills, or I felt, you know, action horror stuff going on. It really does have a good tempo throughout the entire film, and there are some likable characters in this film that you will like and stuff like that that do good things. So, you know what I mean? It's just, it's really good entry into the franchise for real. This is a solid one. This definitely hits that area of the great Texas Chainsaw Massacre films. Like I said, you know, this isn't like... By any stretch, people are going to look at this and be like, oh, this is Oscar worthy. Like, you know, it's, you know, it's like, come on, come on now. This is a horror movie. It's a slasher film. Be realistic when you watch this film. But in terms of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre franchise, a slasher film, a horror film, this is top notch. This is a really good film for sure. And I think it has a lot to offer. Like, you know, it might not be anything crazy new. We might have seen things like this done before in the franchise, but it is better. It, like I said, this film has no business being as good as it is, but it's a very solid film. Now let's get into the negatives, because like I said, this isn't a perfect film. There are some negatives with this movie. Right off the bat, my main negative is the story in general, like in the dialogue, isn't the greatest. It's kind of just a basic 
storyline, you know, kind of like, you know, beginning, middle, end. it has those elements to it, but it's just very basic. But, you know, the execution of all the things in it, like Leatherface and like the cinematography and the score, all that kind of stuff elevate the story. Like I said, this is a very B-level script that doesn't really like offer like any crazy kind of emotion or attachment to it or anything like that. Another thing is, too, there are some confusing parts about where we are at the beginning of this film in terms of Leatherface's character. I don't want to spoil anything at all because you don't like know about stuff that we didn't see in the trailer. But in terms of that character, there are some kind of questions as to how he got there so I am I'm totally down if they decided to do a prequel to this movie I would be totally down because there's some questions I have personally as to how he is where he is in the beginning of this movie then we also have to talk about Sally bringing her back from the first film we know we saw her in the trailer she's returning and this is kind of playing on that Halloween 2018 kind of Laurie Strode vibe thing but I think she she's not in the film that much at all, so that's great because I was I thought I was worried she was going to be the focus of the movie, and she's not the focus at all. Don't worry about that. She's not in it that much, but I really feel like she could have been out of the movie. You could have plucked her out of the movie, and I don't think it really would have changed that much. Like she didn't affect it. Like I mean, there is a point to her character because she does have a connection with a certain other main character in the film. But I just really think you could have plucked Sally's character out of this film and it wouldn't really have made that much of a difference. But overall, in my book, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, this 2022 one is really, I think, a badass entry. It's really like a really good one for sure. You know, I was enjoy I enjoyed this one for sure. Like I said, I'm going to have like, let's see, in terms of rating, it's going to sit at a 7.5. I would say it's like it's between a 7 and an 8. I'm going to say like a 7.5 out of 10 in rating scale on mine. And in terms of the franchise and ranking, I'll have this poster probably right up here on the screen right now. It's going to sit at that number four spot right above Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the beginning. I think this one, like I said, is a very solid. It's got more ambiance. It's got more cinematography. And I like this kind of new metal kind of style to this one a little bit better than that grungy old school, like that grungy Texas Chainsaw beginning one. But that's still a solid film for sure. This one, like I said, sitting at number four, but it doesn't quite meet that nostalgia or love that I have for like Texas Chainsaw 2, the original and the remake or anything like that. But thanks for sticking around with me all for this review for Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2022, currently on Netflix. So go run out and watch it if you haven't seen it. I hope you have or nothing like that. Or I hope you do go decide to run out and watch this because like I said, it's a decent entry into the franchise. I highly recommend checking it out because this is going to be one that I'm going to watch, rewatch a lot. I've already watched it twice and I've had a blast both times watching this film. So as I said, leave your comments in the comments section so I can know from you what you think thought of the film i would love to hear from all of you and don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss a thing have a safe and happy day peace out